We're starting section two of chapter six, which is comparing and ordering integers. So please copy this down into your notebook. If you need to copy it down, you can pause the video. When you're ready, you can uh, continue on by hitting play. So we're going to compare and ordering integers. So we're going to draw our horizontal number line, as you can see. And as you move to the right on your number line, your number is going to get larger. And as you move to the left on your number line, your number is going to get smaller. It doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you end. So if you start and move to the right, your number gets larger. If you start and move to the left, your number gets smaller. So if I start here at negative 5 and I go to negative 1, this number is larger and the negative 5 is a smaller number. Kind of the same thing. If I start here at negative 1 and I go this way, I'm going to the left, so my number gets smaller the more it is on the left, and it's larger the more it is to the right. So we're going to practice some more of this, so take your time, write down your notes. If you need to pause the video, go ahead and pause the video. If you have a question, write yourself a side note that you can ask tomorrow during class. So to compare numbers, we need to understand some of the signs that we're going to use. So I might use a greater than sign. So my greater than sign would be this. So this number on the left is greater than the number on the right. And I always think about it's pointing to the smaller number, and the bigger number is where you have the bigger opening. So if I want to show less than, I want to show that this first number is less than this second number, I can make boxes back up there to make it easier to see. So again, it's pointing. My pointing arrow is pointing at the smaller number. I can also use greater than or equal to, so I'm going to use my greater than sign and put part of the equal sign below it. And that shows that this first number on the left is greater than or equal to the number on the right. I can also use another sign less than or equal to, so there's my less than sign, part of my equal sign, so that shows that my number on the left is less than or equal to the number on the right. So remember, you're going to copy this down in your notebook. If you need to, pause the video, pause the video. If you need to rewind it, please rewind it so that you understand the material. When you're ready to move on, you can hit play. Again, if you have a question, write yourself a side note that you can ask tomorrow during class. Okay, so you're going to copy down example number one. So example number one is comparing numbers on a horizontal number line. So we're going to compare two numbers. So I would recommend pausing the video, copying all this down, but leaving space that you can write in between. And make sure you leave plenty of space. Make sure you're writing large enough that you can see it and that I can see it tomorrow when I check your notes. So we want to compare negative 2 and negative 10. So I'm first going to plot those two numbers on my number line. So I'm going to use red over, actually I'm going to use a different color. Let's use some blue because I'm in the negative. So I have negative 2 it's right here. I'm going to put a dot there. And negative 10. So if I start at negative 2 and I move to the left, I know that negative 10 must be smaller. I know like negative 2 is larger. So I want to point at the smaller number. So I'm pointing at the negative 10 because that's smaller than negative 2. Okay, now I want to compare some positive numbers. So I'm going to compare 2. I'll put a dot at 2. And 10. Okay, so... This time I'm going to the right, so if you remember from the previous couple slides, when we move to the right, our numbers get larger. So again, I'm going to point at the smaller number. So notice this is kind of opposite when you have those negative signs. Your 2 is actually, negative 2 is a bigger number than negative 10. And when we have positive, our 10 is definitely bigger than 2. So we're going to practice some more of these. Again, if you need to copy this down, you can pause the video. You can rewind it to look at it again, and we're going to continue on and practice some more problems. So we can also compare numbers by using a vertical number line. So copy this into your notes. Again, if you need to pause the video while you copy it down, that's a great idea, and then hit play when you're ready 
to add the information to what you already put in your notebook. So example two, comparing lines, numbers on a vertical number line. So I want to compare negative one and negative two. So first I'm just going to put dots where I see negative one and negative two. I know negative two, so I want to compare negative one to negative two. So which one of those numbers is bigger, which one is smaller? And you can almost think about it as we did on our horizontal number line. As we go this way, as we go deeper, our numbers are going to get smaller. And as you go up, your numbers are going to get larger. So if I'm comparing number two, it is smaller than number one, and I, negative one, and I always have to remember I point at the little guy, so I'm going to point at the negative two. Okay, now we're going to compare some positive numbers, kind of the same thing. On my number line, I'm going to put dots where I see my two numbers, and I know as I increase, my numbers get larger. So if I compare 1 to 2, I'm going to compare 1, 1 to 2, I'm going to point at the smaller number. So this time the 1 is a smaller number. And again, notice they are exactly the opposite when we have negatives. So if you need to, pause the video. If you have a question, write yourself that question on the side so that we can answer that tomorrow during class. Okay, so you have some to do on your own. So you're going to do these in your notebook, and then you're going to transfer your answers into the computer. I should see either horizontal or vertical number lines, whichever you prefer. So horizontal number lines. Remember that goes this way. Or you can try a vertical number line if you prefer that. And that goes this way, but I definitely need to see three number lines, one for each question. Try it in your notebook, and then you should see the text box on the right to answer um, the questions so that I can see your results. Take your time. When you need to, pause the video. When you're ready to move on, go ahead and hit play. Okay, so now we're going to start with example three, and we're going to order a bunch of integers. We're going to put them in order. So copy this down into your notebook. You might want to copy it down. Press pause on the video, leave plenty of space in between so we can do some calculations. And then when you're ready, go ahead and put play so you can hear what we're doing. So I'm going to underline what I want to do. So I want to order from least to greatest. And I am going to put my dots on my number line just like I have been the whole time. So I have a negative 3, put a dot where the negative 3 is. Okay, I have a positive 9. I'm going to put a positive 9 there. I have a 0. I'm going to put a dot on my 0. I'm going to put a dot on my negative 7. And I'm going to put a dot on my positive 1. So now I can visually see where the numbers are. So I know the smallest number, which one is way to the left, is negative 7. My next number is negative 3. Then I have a 0. Then I have a 1. And then I have a 9. So I can easily see my answers when I use my horizontal number line. Okay, we're going to try the next example. So again, I'm just going to put dots at my numbers. So I have a negative 5, positive 8, a negative 8, 0, and negative 1. I always do that first. Now I can just write my numbers right below, except this one. I need to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So I actually want to go from Greece greatest to least, so I'm going to start way over to the right. So my first number is an 8, and then I see a 0, and then I see a negative 1, and then I see a negative 5, and then a negative 8. So now I have from the greatest number, the biggest number, to my smallest number in the correct order. So go ahead, write all this down. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. When you're ready to move on, go ahead and press play. So now you're going to do some on your own. So copy this down into your notebook. And again, I should see your horizontal number line. And I would like you to go um, from at least negative 3 to positive 3 with 0 in the middle of your number line. 
and then you're going to enter your answers into the text box on the right for number four. For number five, you're going to do your number line as well, and it looks like you need to go all the way down to a negative eight and all the way up to a positive six. So I should see those in your notebook so that you can get full credit, and I should see your answers in the text box on the right. Again, if you need to pause the video, pause the video. When you're ready to move on, hit play. And if you have questions, write those down as side notes so that tomorrow during class you can ask those questions. Okay, now we're going to kind of apply what we know. So you're going to copy this down again. You might want to pause the video, and then when you're ready to move on, go ahead and put play. So example four, reasoning with integers. So we want to find a number, and it has to be between 3 and negative 7. Okay, so first, on our number line, we should mark out 3. There's positive 3 and negative 7. So mark that down first. Do one thing at a time. And then it says, what is the least possible integer value that will be between these two numbers? So I want the smallest number. So I'm going to think that that's a negative 6. So remember, I need a whole number. I can't have a piece of a number. So my number that is the least possible integer between those two is a negative 6. So when you're ready to move on, go ahead and move on. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. If you need to replay it, go ahead and replay it. And if you have questions, go ahead and write those down to the side. Okay, now you're going to try the same thing. You're going to find a number between 3 and negative 7. So kind of like what I just did, but you're looking for the greatest possible integer. So in your notebook, I should see your horizontal number line. I should see the numbers written on your number line. All the way down to a negative 7. All the way up to a 3. And then I want to know what is the greatest possible integer. What's the greatest possible number that I could find between... 3 and negative 7. You should see a text box on the right. You're going to write your answer, but I should also see all of this in your notebook. If you have questions, write those down on the side, and we'll go over those tomorrow first thing during class. Okay, now we have some word problems. So, example 5 word problem. Looking at the diagram, so just copy down example 5 word problem. Looking at the diagram, which city has the coldest recorded temperature? So I see a bunch of temperatures. Of course, this is from Minnesota and Wisconsin. So I have International Falls, I have Big Fork, I have Cass Lake, I have Leader, Atkin, Grantsburg, Duluth, Babbitt, Hayward, and Phillips. Okay, which has the coldest temperature? So I want to look at the number that's the greatest negative, and it looks like it's negative 46 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's in Babbitt. Burr, don't want to be there. Okay, so go ahead and just write down example five word problem. Write down negative 46 degrees Fahrenheit and Babbitt. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. Okay, so now on your own, you're going to write this in your notebook. Which city has the warmest recorded temperature? So we're looking at the same set of temperatures. So which one is the warmest for January 21st, 2011? You should see a text box on the right. So I want to see the temperature. So I want you to give me the temperature that is the warmest. And I want to know which city was the warmest for January 21st, 2011. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. When you're ready to move on, go ahead and move on. So I've added one last page. Do you have any questions? Do you understand integers? Do you understand which is the greatest, which is the least? Do you have any remaining questions that you would like me to go over tomorrow, first thing when we come in class? So please write those in the text box on the right so that I can be ready for those questions when you come to class.